Hello stargazers and moon lovers, thanks for joining us as we take another look at the moon. It's Friday the 5th of September and right now, as you're watching this video, a 4.5 billion year old rock the size of Australia is floating above your head at 383,475 kilometres away. It's moving at 3,680 kilometres per hour. It has mountains taller than Mount Everest, valleys deeper than the Grand Canyon, and tonight, tonight is putting on one hell of a show. Remember, if you miss tonight's view, you'll never see the moon exactly like this again, ever. Because every single night, our cosmic companion shows us a slightly different face, a different angle, different shadows. And tonight's show, it's 94% illuminated and absolutely spectacular. Welcome to tonight's moon. I'm your guide on this lunar adventure, and trust me, by the end of these 10 minutes, you'll never look at that glowing orb the same way again. So what exactly are we looking at tonight? We're witnessing what astronomers call a waxing gibbous moon. Now, gibbous might sound like something you'd order at a fancy restaurant, but it actually comes from the Latin word meaning humpbacked. Look closely, the moon isn't quite full yet, but it's tantalizingly close. At 94% illumination, we're just two days away from the full corn moon on September 7th. This is actually the perfect time for moon watching because the shadows along the terminator, that's the line between light and dark, create dramatic 3D effects that make lunar features pop like a cosmic relief map. The moon is currently cruising through the constellation Aquarius and at 383,475 kilometers away, it's actually slightly closer than its average distance of 384,400 kilometers. That means tonight, everything appears just a tiny bit bigger, a tiny bit clearer. So let's start our lunar tour with the most famous piece of real estate in the solar system, Mare Tranquillitatis, the Sea of Tranquility. Look at the moon's right side, about halfway up, See that large, dark, smooth area? That's it. This isn't actually a sea, sort of to this point, but a massive plain of ancient basaltic lava that flooded the area 3.9 billion years ago. It's called a mare because early astronomers thought these dark patches were oceans. Spoiler alert, the moon is drier than the driest desert on Earth. But here's why this spot is legendary. On July 20, 1969, right there in the southwestern corner, Neil Armstrong uttered those famous words, the eagle has landed. The Apollo 11 landing site is tiny. You'd need a massive telescope to spot the landing module's base that's still sitting there. But knowing you're looking at the exact spot where humanity first touched another world, that's goosebumps material right there. Now, let's swing our attention to the moon's southern hemisphere. See that brilliantly bright crater with what looks like rays shooting out in all directions? That's Tycho, and it's the moon's youngest large crater, a mere baby at only 108 million years old. Tycho is what happens when a small asteroid, probably about 10 kilometers wide, slams into the moon at 72,000 kilometers per hour. The impact was so violent, it excavated a hole 85 kilometers wide and 4.8 kilometers deep. That's deeper than the Grand Canyon. But here's the really cool part. Those bright rays extending from Tycho, they stretch for over 1,500 kilometers in every direction. They're made of pulverized rock that was blasted out during impact and settled back down in these spectacular patterns. Some of these rays actually extend almost halfway around the moon. When you look at Tycho tonight with binoculars, you're essentially looking at a crime scene. Cosmic CSI, if you will. The evidence of this ancient collision is frozen in time, perfectly preserved because the moon has no atmosphere, no weather, no erosion. It's like the universe's own museum of catastrophic events. And get this, if an impact like Tycho happened on Earth, 
it would cause a mass extinction event that would make the dinosaur killer look like a firecracker. Time to visit the moon's most dramatic mirror, Mare Imbrium, the sea of rains. Look at the upper left portion of the moon's face. See that enormous dark region? That's Imbrium and it's absolutely massive. 1,123,000 square kilometers, bigger than Texas and California combined. But here's what makes this sea special. It's actually a giant impact basin created 3.9 billion years ago when an asteroid the size of New Jersey smashed into the moon. The collision was so catastrophic that debris from it rained down on Earth. We've actually found moon rocks in Antarctica that were blasted here from this impact. The basin filled with lava over millions of years, creating this smooth, dark plain we see today. But look carefully tonight, you can still see the ghost of the original basin. Mountain ranges form an arc around it, like the rim of a giant's bowl. The Alps to the northeast, the Caucasus to the east, and the mighty Apennines to the southeast. Here's something wild. The Apennine Mountains, which form Imbrium's southeastern border, contain peaks that rise five kilometers above the Mallory floor. That's taller than any mountain in the lower 48 states. And they were formed in minute, minute, thrown up by the violence of the impact like splash marks frozen in stone. Fun fact, Soviet and Chinese robotic missions have landed in Mare Imbrium, and it's likely to be the site of future lunar bases. Why? Because those smooth, flat lava plains make perfect landing zones, and the area might harbour deposits of helium-3, a potential fuel for future fusion reactors. You're literally looking at humanity's potential next neighbourhood. Ha. Huh. Now for something completely different. Let's hunt for the moon's largest sinuous rill, Valles Shrulateri, also known as Schroeder's Valley. You'll find it near the moon's left edge in an area called the Aristarchus Plateau. This feature looks like a massive dried up riverbed and in a way, that's exactly what it is except the river was made of lava, not water. Starting at a volcanic vent called the Cobra's Head, and yes, it really does look like one, this ancient lava channel winds for 160 kilometers across the lunar surface, reaching widths of up to 10 kilometers. Here's where it gets wild. Billions of years ago, this channel carried rivers of molten rock hot enough to melt steel. The lava carved its own channel as it flowed, creating this winding valley we see today. It's like looking at the moon's ancient plumbing system. What's fascinating is that Valley Schrodery tells us the moon wasn't always the dead world we see today. It was once violently volcanic, with lava fountains that would have been visible from Earth if anyone had been around to watch. The valley is so large that the entire Grand Canyon could fit inside it with room to spare. Pro tip, this is a challenging feature to spot with the naked eye, but with even small binoculars, you can catch glimpses of this ancient lava highway, especially tonight with the dramatic shadow play along the Terminator. For our final stop, let's visit the moon's most mysterious crater, Aristarchus, often called the Lighthouse of the Moon. You'll find it on the left side of the moon, and even though it's only 40 kilometers wide, it's the brightest crater visible from Earth. Seriously, this thing is so bright, it actually glows during a lunar eclipse. And here's what makes Aristarchus absolutely bonkers. It's twice as bright as most other lunar features. Why? The impact that created it just 450 million years ago, making it one of the moon's youngest large craters excavated material from deep beneath the surface that hasn't been darkened by billions of years of space weathering. You're literally looking at the moon's fresh underwear drawer. But here's where it gets weird, really weird. For centuries astronomers have reported strange glowing phenomena at Aristarchus. We're talking about documented reports of red glows, bluish mists and bright spots that appear and disappear. These transient lunar phenomena 
TLPs, have been observed by everyone from medieval monks to NASA astronauts. Neil Armstrong himself, while orbiting the moon on Apollo 11, described seeing an area at Aristodicus that was considerably more illuminated with a slightly fluorescent quality. What causes these mysterious glows? Possibly gas escaping from the lunar interior, maybe static electricity from dust, or perhaps something we haven't figured out yet. The moon still keeps its secrets. The crater sits on the edge of the Aristarchus Plateau, right next to Shrudder's Valley that we explored earlier. This whole region is like the moon's version of Yellowstone, evidence of massive volcanic activity, mysterious glows, and features that shouldn't exist on a dead world. In fact, Aristarchus is so bright that experienced astronomers can actually spot it with the naked eye as a bright point on the moon. During tonight's 94% illumination, it practically blazes against the darker surrounding terrain. If you have binoculars, it looks like someone left a spotlight on up there. Some observers say it looks almost metallic or crystalline, like a diamond set in grey stone. And here's something to ponder. If there's still occasional outgassing happening at Aristarchus, that means the moon isn't completely dead inside. There might still be geological processes happening right now, as you're watching. You could literally be looking at an active world, not just a fossil. So there you have it. Five incredible lunar features you can see tonight, September 5th, 2025. But here's something to blow your mind as we wrap up. Every single feature we've explored tonight has been looked at by humans for thousands of years. Ancient Babylonians, Greek philosophers, Chinese astronomers, Galileo himself, they all gazed at the same formation. But they could only wonder what they were. You? You know? You know that the Sea of Tranquility is frozen lava, not water? You know Tycho's rays are pulverized rock from a cosmic collision? You know that Shrutter's Valley once carried rivers of molten stone. And tonight, when you step outside and look up at that 94% illuminated waxing gibbous moon hanging at 383,475 kilometers away, you're not just seeing a light in the sky. You're looking at a world, a world with mountains and valleys, a world that bears the scars of billions of years of cosmic history, a world that humans have actually walked on. And here's your homework. Go outside tonight. Take a photo of the moon with your phone. Seriously try it. Hold your phone steady. Tap to focus on the moon and lower the exposure. You'll be amazed at what you can capture. Share it with someone and tell them one thing you learned tonight. Because in two days, when the full corn moon rises, on September 7th, you'll see it differently. You won't just see the man on the moon. You'll see Tycho's rays, Copernicus's peaks, and the sea where humanity first touched another world. The moon isn't just a light in the sky. It's a destination, a laboratory, a time machine, and tonight, it's putting on the show just for you. Clear skies, moon watchers, now get out there and look up.